Hi, Reva, it's really great to talk to you and uh, welcome to this very first interview on the subject of queer magic and very exciting to meet you at last um, on, on Zoom. And uh, I know you as a writer, blogger uh, at Pathios and all round inclusive person uh, of great magicalness and um, look forward to learning some more about you. So um, let's talk about you. Uh, so let's yeah. start with um, how long you've been involved in paganism. I've been involved in paganism since I was around 13, 14 years of age. My dad started buying me books on Wicca. He got me started on Cunningham Wicca. Uh, kind of pulled me aside one day and said, you know, you're not crazy, you're my daughter. And, you know, I picked out some books for you. I read through them first. And, you know, I'd like to get you involved in something that uh, he felt was, you know, beneficial and, you know, relatively harmless. Like I wasn't going off and, you know, doing weird you know, dark, spooky magic or anything like that. You know? <laughs> I was a kid. I was a kid. He didn't want me to get into too much trouble. Um, apparently, he already got into plenty of magical trouble himself. Uh, when I was a little bit younger, he talked to me a little bit about that. But um, so, yeah, I've been, at, I've been about involved in paganism for a while and got involved in traditional witchcraft uh, several years ago, actually. Um, I started off in an Alexandrian offshoot. And then later on, also went off and became an initiate of Blue Star Wicca. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, so um, I guess that almost makes you hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, tell us a bit about your queer identity, if you would mind. Sure. Um, I am an aromantic, asexual, and I'm also a gender non-binary. Cool. So, yeah, uh, um, I just came out um, as a gender uh, a little over a month ago. I'd say about a month, month and a half ago. Um, it was something I've been going back and forth on for several years, I think, since I was a teenager and basically just kept talking myself out of it. And uh, some events happened in my life and I had some conversations with some people. Um, might have had a glass of wine or two. And kind of made me go off and say, okay, I need to do some serious thinking about it. And, and so I did. And uh, yeah, here I am. Awesome. Welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, so I'm also non-binary, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. Um, and I recently decided to be a they. Um, <laughs> and I'm not they. So I, I'm a sort of not they at work because it's too much hassle. But I'm, yes. I, I work with people in every room. other context. English is her second language, and I, I don't want to rock that boat. I'm, I'm too, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really tricky. I mean, yeah. So I can, I can relate to that. So how, um, how inclusive or affirming or accommodating have you found your witchcraft traditions to be of your queer identity? Um, extremely, and we're still having conversations around that. So there's definitely, um, there's been growing, which is fantastic. There's been growing, there's been learning and uh, accommodations. Um, and one of my covens, my high priest is trans. Um, and another group, um, basically we've often described things as basically learning how to do roles over, um, what amounts to assigned gender. In other words, it's not what's in your pants, it's between your ears. Um, there've been actual incidents, you know, even those who aren't even queer where, you know, you, you, you lose, you know, members get move away, you have relationships break up. And if you're suddenly, you know, the people who can lead a coven aren't a traditional male, female pairing, what do you do? You yeah. Know, well, then that doesn't make any sense. You know, just get up, do the work, you know, uh, do the role. Um, we've had a lot of very interesting conversations around what does this mean for people who still want to practice traditionally and want to get involved in the, the, the hetero and the, the fertility. And of course, you know, the answer always is, sure, go at it. Have fun. Yeah, absolutely. Just let it. the rest of us do our <laughs> funky thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no one's saying you can't do that anymore. It's just you know we're not shutting you out. 
we're not leaving you out of the conversation. We're, we're not excluding you. We're just saying, hey, can you make room for us at the table? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was kind of the whole point of inclusive Wicca that, yeah. um, that you know, you can still have heterosexual stuff, yeah. um, but let's have some queer stuff as well, please. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a big enough table. Yeah, right, exactly. And, um, you know, fertility doesn't have to mean um, making babies, right? Right, yeah. I mean, there's this crops fertility. I mean, heck, you know, if you don't have fertile crops, you know, we're, we're kind of done for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one well, can survive that. So there, there's a lot of different types of fertility that's important. And of course, you know, this is an agriculturally based tradition, the whole wheel of the years surrounding agriculture. So it does make sense that, you know, there's a larger fertility discussion to be had and not just baby making. Yeah. Well, yeah. And also um, the thing about, uh, you know, making love in the furrows to encourage the crops to grow, you don't need to be, you know, any any couple of any gender can can make love in the furrows to encourage yeah. the crops to grow. It's like, that's it. the whole point of sympathetic magic, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So do you practice on your own as well as sounds like you don't have time with all these other traditions i actually do well it's it's kind of a, it's kind of funny because um I, I do practice on my own and not just stuff within my own tradition that i do you know obviously on my own as you know my primary daily practice but i'm also um actively involved in regular daily practice with my various deities um especially hakate i do daily ritual to hakate um and once a month um uh, i do an hakate when i'm at a supper i do a special offering ritual right for her uh, around the new moons. Cool. These are all part of my practice. So my practice is, um, it does involve magic. It also involves uh, devotional work. And there are parts where there's definitely a mushy middle as the devotional work often is a means of feeding the practice, as it were. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so, uh, then um, my other question was going to be, um, do you, what's your favorite book on queer paganism or magic Ooh, or witchcraft? That's challenging. Um, Can I have I more than one? Like, yeah, I definitely like Misha Maglin's new book. It's yeah, very, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've also been very interested now. They, they haven't really written books strictly on the topic per se, but I do know that um, Jennifer and Gavin Bone have written some really great stuff on progressive witchcraft. And I've also attended uh, their lectures over at an occult conference and they were very adamant that, you know, it doesn't matter genders in regards to initiation. And they're very, you know, they're, they're definitely, you know, they're in the game, so to speak. <laughs> they are <laughs> totally class. sound and yeah. I love them. Yeah. Yeah, they're wonderful. That's they are really, really good people. Um, yeah. So much time for them. Um, yeah, wonderful people. Um, yeah, and actually a question I didn't put on the list, so I'm going to put you on the spot now. Go for it. Uh, have we got a definite... What do we think queer magic might be? Oh, honestly, I think that depends on the queer. But I definitely have to say, um, especially for people like me who, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, as far as like the non-binary space, um, the asexuality, I definitely get, find that definitely correlates with a lot of the liminal spaces and working with liminal deities. I have a, a close relationship with Akate and Hermes. They're both liminal gods. Um, so I definitely think there's something to be said for queer magic occupying liminal spaces. Mm. I it's really like, like that idea. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, I'm very drawn to um, uh, one of the first deities I ever, the first time I ever invoked a male deity on myself uh, it was actually Mercury. So um, it's a bit of a connection with Hermes there. Um, yeah. And would I be right in thinking then that you're a polytheist as well? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, one of my other favourite books on um, sort of non-binary is non-binary witchcraft, uh, casting a queer circle, non-binary witchcraft by System and I, which is very very good. Um, might be of interest to you as well. So uh, yeah, I've heard yeah. It's about it. It's definitely on my to be read pile. I can certainly recommend it. It's very very good. Um, right, so your blog is at Pathios, and it is now called. 
like Tia Dika Gwich is essentially, that's my blog over at Patheos. And um, I blogged about tea over there also. Actually, it's actually kind of funny how long it took me to blog about tea, given that it is a Tea Addicted Witch blog. Yeah. Yes. So. Tea is good. Tea is very good. Yes, it is excellent. Good. Well, uh, I will get you to give me the web addresses of those uh, as well. And uh, yeah, I believe it's um, patheos.com slash blog slash Tea Addicted Witch. I should probably right. check. I will put it up on a slide at the end <laughs> um so yeah and is there anything else you'd like to add that's a very good question um let's see uh what haven't we covered <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit of polytheism we even got to talk about tea a bit i, I like tea yeah tea is good um and electric kettle so uh you you remarked on the tardis behind me earlier yes. and um so i I guess you are a Doctor Who fan as well then. I am indeed. I am indeed. Excellent. So one of the things I've noticed over the years is that just about every witch and Wiccan that I know is a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. That's very funny. Yes. Yeah, Tenth Doctor is definitely my favourite. I, I love David Tennant. Oh yes, David Tennant. Oh, he's still my fluttering heart. <laughs> yes. And also my when I grew up with Tom Baker, so he yeah, was my first Tom Doctor. Baker's fantastic. Tom Baker yeah. yeah, definitely. Chris Huckleston had a good run too. I, I was I was sad he only got one season. He was really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was good. Lots of planets have a north. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's something about the archetype of the wizard. Um, that's our theory anyway, that it's like, you know, he flies around in his little box, which is kind of, it's probably a portal to the other world. Space um, wizard. <laughs> Yeah, it's clearly <laughs> some sort of wizard archetype, right? Yeah. Yeah, it works. pretty cool. All right, well, thank you very much for this uh, lovely interview. It's been great. and um, Thank you for having me. Uh, you are very welcome, and uh, thanks for putting up with being the first one, so you're like the guinea pig.